Hi, I'm Mandis Mombach, a Principal Solutions Architect with AWS, and I'm joined here with Ryan Nix, another Solutions Architect with AWS. Throughout our video series, we've spoken about terms like automation and containerization as a part of a digital transformation strategy. In this module, we're going to talk about the specifics around security and how you can take all of the principles that we've spoken about in all of our other videos, where you can find the links below, and secure them and use it in a fashion that can allow you to audit, track, and secure your whole environment. So Ryan, can you tell us more about what security should look like in an environment that is completely automated and uses containers? Well, we spent a lot of time getting developers and operations teams into the DevOps mindset and that shift to the left. And security now needs to do very much the same thing. So security needs to follow a set of similar tenants. Security should be agile, it should be automated. Any human or manual decision needs to be removed as a blocker and we need to find a way of taking advantage of pipelines and things to automate out these processes. Security also needs to go through a mindset shift in that it needs to become a, a continuous process, starting all the way in the beginning from the developer, continuing through the build process, and ultimately continuing even further once it is in a production state. Uh, the biggest change, I believe, is security needs to be collaborative. We need to see developers and security teams working side by side to achieve a, a, a same set of goals. And Finally, uh, the security process needs to be one of, of rails or guidance as opposed to gates and simply locking people out and hindering them. Uh, let's take a second and have a look at, at what a flow like that would possibly look like. So if we look at a, a, a stereotypical flow, the DevOps flow would start with the developer committing code to a repository. Uh, that code would then trigger some sort of pipelining mechanism. Uh, CI CD build pipeline kicking off and saying, you know, here's a change to the code, let's start inspecting that code at that point. Um, static code assessment looking for things such as uh, compromised AWS keys, for example, um, an inspection of the actual language code for vulnerabilities and, and anything that is desirable to that organization. Once that is then approved, we can move on to the next step and we can go into a build process. So the CI CD process kicking off a build cycle, which would in a container context, take the code and transpose it into a container. So building out a, a container platform as such. Once the container exists, a secondary security inspection can take place, uh, which would be a, a container scanning for container vulnerabilities and things that we would see within a Docker file, for example. Uh, that, if successful, could then move on into a production journey, and if there are issues highlighted, it could be sent back to the development team for, uh, to address. Ideally, what we're looking at is security being very much sooner in the process, allowing developers to make incremental changes to their applications within a security context. Once the container exists, uh, we can then go through a cycle of, of unit testing, of application testing, um, user acceptance control, ultimately pushing the container and the application into a production context. Once in production, we don't stop there. We see that continual assessment taking place, having a look at has something changed in the security posture and do I need to reassess my workloads. Uh, and again, uh, what we ultimately want to get to is the application building blocks being whitelisted artifacts that my development team can reuse without having to go through a security um, exercise over and over again, or at least not duplication of that exercise. So that's like a tie-in that we would have with our artifactory deployment that we did in earlier modules. Correct. Many of our customers are taking uh, their code, putting it into one repository, going through a security assessment, and once that assessment is completed, taking a whitelisted artifact, storing it in artifactory, and then developers being able to check out that artifact and reuse it.
And how does that work? Like a developer would have to go through this every time he wants to use the library, or will he be, have freedom to use it once it's whitelisted? Okay, so, so not necessary. Uh, anything that is already whitelisted, that has gone through the security assessment, is, is placed in a whitelisted artifact repository, and developers can, with confidence, consume these resources and simply use them because they have been ratified already. However, the developer may want to use an assembly or a component that is not in the whitelisted uh, repository. They would then load that into a, uh, a non-whitelisted repository. Uh, it would allow them to develop the application platform, but then they security team out of band would assess that for posture and if it passes assessment transpose that to uh, the whitelisted artifactory for future use. So, right. so coming back to your question, uh, if you have something new, yes you'd have to go through that process. Anything that has gone through that process before can simply be consumed without having to go through the assessment. Right, so something because this happens out of sync essentially of the development of the application, the developers don't get slowed down and the security team goes and out of band secures it and whitelists it they provide any feedback if they find anything to the developer and the developer can then pivot on that, right? Correct. And, and, and that is where we're seeing security get to the same degree of agility as we are seeing with our developers and our operations teams in the business. Yeah, and that's also a very big cultural shift because the security teams now work a lot closer and more integrated with the developers than ever before. Yes, and, and that's one of the reasons why we are seeing a requirement for collaboration. The developers, the operations teams and security teams almost need to have the access to the same tools. Uh, in the past, we would see a, a security team getting a list of what the concerns are and communicating that to the dev team. Ideally, what we want is the developers themselves to be able to see those interfaces and see the concerns for themselves and address it themselves. We want to see a, a holistic shift of ownership. The developer should now become the security advocate within the business. Let's take a second and put this into practice. Let's take a scanning tool like Clear running in Fargate and let's use it to scan a public facing image such as uh, something on Docker Hub for vulnerabilities and then take a step back and have a look at the same application we loaded into our Elastic Container uh, Registry and see if we can uh, highlight any things of concern that our development team should know about. Very quickly, uh, I've already pre-provisioned uh, the scanning tool into Fargate. Uh, it has gone through a vulnerability database update. I've pulled down a utility called CLAR, and what we're going to use is uh, CLAR to do a manual scan very quickly. So if you're following through the workshop, uh, the instructions will guide you through the entire setup process. I'm going to scan something that's very commonly utilized uh, in application builds. Um, a simple operating system, something like the Debian OS, which is uh, hosted on uh, Docker Hub. What I need to do is just go and update the IP address for my Claire endpoint. This is sitting in ECS. And as before, you can go into the task and collect the IP address as we've done in previous labs. And once we've told it where the clear endpoint is and the image we want to scan, which in this case is Debian 9, uh, it will connect to the environment. And as you can see here, we are getting a surprisingly lengthy list of, of vulnerabilities and uh, not just the vulnerabilities themselves, but these, these are high risk vulnerabilities. Uh, a development team would have to now take a step back and have a look at uh, what patches, what uh, mediations would have to take place in order to correct these. Yeah, uh, and that's uh, something we expect in a public image, right? Correct, correct. But, uh, but what's nice about this now is that the team actually knows about these vulnerabilities at the time they're building their application. And because they control the operations inside of the container itself, they can immediately rectify that, right? That happens on that point already. Correct, uh, as opposed to what we were seeing in the past with the application getting almost into production and then issues being highlighted and going all the way back to the beginning. Right, so this is nice and easy. This is scanning a public repository. But if you're taking your container image and you're placing it inside ECR, the security model works ever so slightly. So your security assessment tool wouldn't be able to use a simple username and password because 
DECR product platform doesn't store usernames and passwords. So we need to change uh, the authentication mechanism ever so slightly. Uh, as part of this module, I've created a little script that deals with the login process. Let's quickly have a look at the contents of that script. So scanning something that is in a GitHub repository is fairly straightforward because those are publicly accessible. With a ECR repository on AWS, uh, the usernames and passwords are not stored. So we would need to adapt our scanning or vulnerability tools to collect the login details. I've created a very simple script that uh, will provide you an example as to how you can achieve this. Let's dig into the scan script that I've created. So I'm just going to open that up in a text editor. And if you look inside the script, very, very quickly, you'll see the Docker login, which collects the login details for the, doc, um, the ECR platform in this account, uh, echoes out the credentials for that, and, and stores them within the script so that when we run the instruction to scan, the scanning tool has those credentials. Uh, this will allow uh, the development team or the operations or security teams to scan images, not just in a, uh, a public Docker Hub context, but also the images that are in your internal ECR repository. As with any scanning system, the assumption is that we are going to find something, that there is going to be some highlighted concern. Uh, we need an effective mass, a mechanism to, for developers, operations, and security teams to identify those risks and close them. We shouldn't be concerned around finding the risks. In this case, failure is a good thing. If we're finding security concerns, we're aware of them and we can address them. Right, fail fast, fix the problem, iterate, and get to our customers faster, right? That's the whole premise of this for us. Correct. And the core tenets of security, the agility, the collaboration, the continuous factor of it are what we are driving in this discussion, that whole shift to the left mm -hmm. of security modules. Please, uh, this is an open workshop, so take some time to run through it. And if you see something that's value you want to explore further, feel free to cut an issue against it and give us feedback as to how we can improve and expand it. Right, so now this is the manual process. You've shown us how you can take a public image and scan against the public image. But we've also spoken about automation, right? Right now, in this experience, the developer will need to manually run the CLAR CLI tool to have CLAR examine it. How can we integrate this into our automation pipeline so that automation pipeline does this for us and notifies us if anything fails? Okay, so there's, there's two ways in which this could uh, be achieved within a, a production context. The one school of thought is I build a container every single time my developer writes code. So a developer will commit code into a Git repository. The pipeline automatically kicks off and builds that into a container image. And what you can do is, as part of that pipeline, build your scanning solution into that step. So every time a container build happens, the security assessment happens at the same time, and if it succeeds, moves on to uh, pushing that into a live environment. I prefer a slightly different approach though, and that is one where security is non-blocking, where the developer can build the container and the security assessment happens as a separate CI-CD process. So in this context, we would see the developer commit code to a repository, pipeline would kick off, build the container, and the developer can continue developing. A separate process is then instantiated, a separate CI-CD pipeline, if you will, detects this new container and starts a out-of-band security assessment in which the development process and the security assessment now run parallel to each other, allowing the developer to continue development and allowing the security team to assess posture without them sort of slowing each other down. Yes, of course, the development team would have to find out about whatever the security team uh, discovers and then mitigate those components. Uh, this is a, a fairly new shift in the process. In terms of Automation, how it is achieved, uh, very, very simply, most scanning tools in the market nowadays uh, offer a CLI type interaction that will allow the security and the operations teams to simply embed the security assessment CLI command into a CI-CD pipeline process or as part of their build process.
Right. And most of these pipelines also have integration with tools so that they can react to events. So if a exp um, something is exposed or a CVE gets notified that it can actually block the pipeline or kick off a new build to isolate container images that have already been deployed into your environment so that they don't have impact on the rest of your production environment. Absolutely correct. And it, it's up to the customer to ascertain uh, what are those automations in the context of their business. So uh, if you're in a production state, absolutely, you would not see this container going into a production state if there's an issue. However, if it is in the early stages of development, you may see that container moving into other elements of the staging environment so as to not hinder the development process. Thank you very much, Ryan. So in this module, we spoke about security and how you should really shift that responsibility of security to the left, make it come closer to the developer, make them an integrated part of the whole security experience. They need to be able to detect problems as quickly as they happen so that they can iterate and make those changes required to get the product to the customers. Security is one of the biggest cultural shifts that need to happen in your business. But through the process of automation and using the same and the correct technology choices, you could very easily implement that with very little friction and allow your developers to have the freedom to explore, to really get creative, but in confidence, deploy your applications and get them to your customers. So that about sums it up from us here at the Digital Modernization Video Series. I hope that at this point, you feel a little bit more confident about how to talk about digital modernization, where you go from a legacy business model into one that is more modern and embraces things like high availability, elasticity, and most importantly, how you're no longer afraid of failure, where you iterate on that failure quickly and truly become that agile entity your customers deserve. Please follow all of the links below in this video to look at all of the subjects we discussed. Things like automation, security integration, containerization, for more depth on what you can do in order to become a truly agile and modern business. And thanks again for watching us.